happy Wednesday. Beautiful day. We're trying to get some warm weather. And I get to work from home. And uh, that's the pretty fascinating part about it. I uh, wanted to bring up today a quick concept of a saying that's really energized me over the past few months. And that is, I think it's been attributed to Bill Gates. I'm sure he's, maybe he's not the first one to say it. I don't know. But the saying goes that we um, overestimate what we can accomplish in the short term and we underestimate what we can accomplish in the long term. And one of the interesting examples of that that I just thought of this morning, and I said I wanted to do a video on this or some kind of discussion or an article on that topic, but then today it melded with the idea of a, of a book that I had read many years ago and reread a couple of times and mentioned to a few of you, and that is The Life and Times of Congressman John Quincy Adams by uh, um, UMass professor uh, Leonard Richards, and he wrote about, focused on John Quincy Adams' career, political career, after he was president. So for those of you that may or may not have been paying attention, he actually ran for Congress two years after he left the presidency. You know, and he was uh, bitter and, and, and felt robbed because he didn't get his two terms like every other president before him did. You know, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, they all got two terms and he got one. And uh, so he had his, you know, his, his problems, his bitterness, his petty feelings, but he ran from Congress. And over the time, his term in Congress, he started getting more and more energized and involved in, well, slowly at first, but more involved in um, the abolition of slavery and also um, really living the, uh, the, the, the Bill of Rights and Civil Liberties of, uh, of, of you know, what the country stood for, really representing that for people that were maybe were maybe excluded by, um, by uh, you know, by, by the, the current of the time. So, you know, he would, uh, argument obviously for abolition of slavery, um, um, Native American Indian rights, and a lot of other little pieces like that, he would send petitions. And after a while, now the, what's interesting about the book is it keeps the full humanity of, of, of JQA. You know, he's, um, he was a, a hero of the abolition movement, but the book also highlighted all his petty feelings and how he felt about things. And the idea is that he was human. And over a period of time, he really revved up. And this was something that started slow, but over the long term, hence the quote, you know, we can accomplish in, uh, what we can accomplish long term, um, he really became a force for the abolition movement. And a lot of oppressed groups felt he was their, uh, their champion. And he... As a human being, he was human. He began to really relish this role, you know, that hey, I'm 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 a champion of the oppressed. And so the book is a great read. This is going to be my my book of the trimester. I was thinking of what would be a good book to, you know, for the recommend to the clients and and such. And and I think this this is going to be it. So this is a fantastic book. I've read it multiple times. It's an easy read. It's an enjoyable read. And for those of you who love American history and what the U.S. you know what the founding of the U.S. stood for, you know, among you know, in between all of the other stuff, but with, you know, the real founding of it, that's it. And the, and the key to John Quincy Adams' um, pers um, life as a congressman, number one, he did three things he, 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 he focused, uh, that I noticed from him, that really emphasize the idea that if you're trying to accomplish something, you know, don't try to overestimate what you can accomplish in the next few months, but think about what you can accomplish over the next couple of years. Um, of course, by focusing short term, but realizing what you can reap long term. Number one, he didn't quit. You know, he after not getting a second term in Congress, he didn't quit. He went. I mean, I'm sorry, as a presidency, he didn't quit. He which went and jumped into Congress, served there for 20, 20 plus, 18, 20 plus years, an exact number. He didn't back down. Number two, he didn't back down from shots to his ego. I mean, imagine the at the time, you know, uh, how much he would have got made fun of and a president, he didn't get his second term, so he goes to Congress and just the abuse he took from people. And, you know, some of it might have stung, but he used it as a strengthening thing and he became a champion for those who, who didn't have, who didn't have representation and he didn't allow those shots to his ego to affect him. And, uh, and my third point was, um, you know, he worked from his conscience and his timetable. So when he was doing this work in Congress for, for, for so long, so many terms, and focusing on something that seemed like a lost cause in the, in the, you know, the 1830s and became stronger and stronger in the 1840s, etc. Uh, he focused on what his conscience said to do. So even though the book you know, highlights his humanity, his faults, his, his pettiness, 
things this and that. I read one comment on, um, on a Barnes & Noble book review site about one person that had a problem with the author pointing out all his foul, you know, his, 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 um, you know his, his weak points and his personality weak points, how he can't just say he was a hero and, and just emphasize, put a cape on him and he flies through the sky. No, I mean, I think the book is great that emphasizes, you know, we all have those petty things. You know, some, he might not have been as strong as he was if he didn't react so positively to the motivation of, uh, of um, you know, of people uh, telling him he was their champion. And the book reflects that. So he let his conscience and his timetable drive things. Goodbye, Mr. Harley. He let you know he um, worked from his timetable. He worked from his conscience. So those three things. He didn't quit. All right. He didn't quit. He didn't back down shots to his ego. I mean, he got lots of shots to his ego. He didn't back down for that. And third, he worked from his timetable and his consciousness. He didn't overestimate what he could, he could accomplish in his first term. But as he learned and absorbed and got motivated, he, he, uh, he, I don't know, maybe he, at the beginning he might have underestimated what he, he could, could accomplish long term. But then, you know, after doing that, it's a lesson to all of us that, wow, you know, over a period of time, things can happen. So you may be starting a business. You know, I've talked to some clients and some people that are interested in starting your own business. Don't be overwhelmed by what you could accomplish, you can't accomplish in the short term. Um, think about what you might accomplish in the long term by making proper short-term decisions day to day and week to week and see how that might compound for you. Anyway, that's today's lesson. I'll have references to the book down below. Um, and uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. But fantastic read, fantastic lesson. And um, let me know how it works for you and how you're doing some of that in your life. It's, it's definitely 80-20 are, you know, involved also. Uh, that's a whole separate topic that we talk about. But, you know, if you are doing the right 80-20 things with with this attitude of, of you know, incremental improvement, then good things are gonna happen for you in whatever you're doing. Side note too, what's interesting, uh, one, one more story I'll share is I, I talked with a principal of a, of a private school in my area recently, and she was, um, she was uh, formerly in the city of Austin and had, uh, you know, had, had um, been asked to take over a, a very poorly performing school, and within three years she had turned it around. Now three years, well, you look back and say, wow, only three years, but I'm sure month to month and day to day in those three years, uh, things were, you know, it seemed like things were a pain, things were happening, you know, it wasn't so obvious in month one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but maybe as momentum started picking up and you could look back at it.